Um, so PDF is good for printing or for sending to other people to print. Uh, sometimes you want to, uh, however, um, uh, place things in uh, a presentation, let's say a PowerPoint. So you've got a couple of options uh, here. Uh, if you don't, if you're like really satisfied with your work and you don't want to edit it anymore in, um, in uh, PowerPoint, uh, then the option that you'll want to use is File, Safer Web and Devices. Okay. <coughs> so the best thing to use with um, PowerPoint is PNG. So PNG is it's a, a bitmap uh, format which supports uh, transparency. Uh, so that's always kind of useful. So as you can see here from this uh, black and gray, uh, white and gray uh, checkerboard, uh, it supports 24-bit uh, or like full color resolution, unlike uh, GIF, which supports like really dinky resolution. Uh, and there's no compression, unlike JPEG, which is really meant for images and not uh, figures. Because the, the thing that'll happen is if you zoom into this thing, you know, you'll get like crazy ugly artifacts if you save a JPEG. Uh, so you know, yeah. Ugh. Ugly. But if you select Ping24, it's, it's a lossless format, basically. And it's very well supported. Um, it's, it's supported on the web. Uh, it's supported in all the Microsoft products. So do use PNG24. It's just save, um, for example, and okay, I have a lot of <laughs> windows open and a lot of stuff. Ah, yeah, so here it is. Uh, so you can uh, preview this thing, right? So it's exported it uh, quite well. Uh, now I haven't made it into like really high resolution, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, so you can place it. Uh, so I don't know if you can actually drag it in this version of PowerPoint. It depends on the exact version that you're using. But if you drag it, what will it do? Ah, it worked correctly. Right, and you can see it. It preserved uh, the transparency. Uh, now, if you want it to, to, to be higher resolution, what you'll do is, when you select Safe for Web, you'll want to go in the image size uh, options, um, for example, 200 or 3000 uh, percent, and then apply, and then it'll make it bigger, right? And you can export it to, to, for it to be smaller. Um, uh, in, in PowerPoint. A question: When um, where do you exactly specify DPI's in in general uh, in your Illustrator files or here? Because a lot of times uh, journals have speci specific DPI uh, requirements, so uh, that kind um, of reminded me of that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that usually, it'll, if you don't say uh, if, if you don't specify, it'll uh, think that it's 72 or either 72 or 96 DPI, and I'll have to check. Um, so that if you say 200%, that'll give you twice that amount, so about uh, 144 or 180 whatever DPI if you, select it, if you set it to 200%. And that'll be print quality, right? Although I do recommend that if you're going to print something, you should save it as PDF and not as some dinky uh, uh, non non vector format. Uh, when you're in PowerPoint, uh, it's actually quite important to make it to make the figure bigger because uh, sometimes it'll look fine on the screen, but then when you go full screen or you know the, the resolution maybe of the projector is really high, then your figures will look really ugly. Um, so it's important to do it uh, this way because it uh, actually the, the the figures that you export are going to be uh, anti-aliased, right? So that they're going to be like smooth and like really nice looking, as you can see over here, right? All this text is perfectly readable. It's not like jagged uh, and so forth. Um, you have a couple of other options if you want to keep the text editable uh, or things editable. So you can uh, copy and paste into 
PowerPoint. So that's one way to do it. So if you press Control V, uh, you'll often get this, right? Uh, it says, like, it just copies the text basically. Now, what you can do is uh, paste special. And the one that you want to use is enhanced metafile, uh, not Windows metafile. Okay. And it might, might work. Okay, sorry about that. I had to pause because I just realized that I had stolen the keyboard of someone in the lab to do this presentation. Ah, uh, you're, you're <laughs> I am recording <laughs> for, uh, yes, nice. say hello it's to the nice. world, uh, Jan. Nice. <laughs> it is. With millions of people who are listening to this cast podcast. Okay. Well, not really. Uh, so uh, if you want to, so uh, as I was saying, I just pasted something in the, uh, uh, using the EMF format uh, into PowerPoint. And now it's going to be editable if I just click Edit Picture. And now you want to convert it to a Microsoft Office drawing object. And you just say yes. And sometimes it'll work fine. For example, um, so awesome. Oh. But it did miss this text, which was rotated 90 degrees, because it's not an option that is supported by the enhanced meta file format. But that's about the best thing that you can do uh, if you want to, uh, to to keep the figures editable in PowerPoint. Uh, the other option is to save uh, is to actually save the file as EMF using uh, file export. Right as EMF. Or if you want, you can use Save for Microsoft Office. Uh, and then you see, it is a PNG file. Actually, this, this, will, uh, this, this option, Save for Microsoft Office, is a PNG file. Like It's a high resolution PNG file. So if you don't want to go through um, Save for Web to actually set the size, you can use this option. All right. Um, and that pretty much covers uh, all you need to know about exporting. Uh, the yeah, so if you want to uh, put this on the web, uh, PNG is a, is a great format for the web. Um, so sometimes editors will say, oh, well, you know, I need TIFF or whatever. Uh, TIFF is like this ancient format. Pretty much everybody uh, can, pretty much anything can read PNG, um, Firefox, uh, well, all your browsers basically uh, uh, since like 15 years ago. So everything supports PNG, and it's a, it's a great format. So that's what I would recommend.